God, everybody's already here. I'm the last one here. Hey. Hello. Hello. Hi, everybody. Can Good. Okay. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Okay. Just checking, make sure I was, uh, my mic was connected. I hate that when that happens. There we go. So Lynette, you went to Door County. Did you have a good time there? Oh, it was just fabulous. And you saw the, I think Dave has some better photos than I got, but. Um, you, oh yeah, uh, sure. That, was that a harvest moon or a hunter's moon? It was right over the harbor, right? Reflect the was big it? moon. It was, you couldn't have planned it. <laughs> yeah, that that was pretty huge. You like, you like, you never see it that big. <laughs> that's like where where that that's that's coming too close. <laughs> it was unbelievable. So, yeah, we had yeah, quite it was. too. It was beautiful. Every day was beautiful, except for when we came home. We were driving through all the storms in uh, oh. and the term tornadoes on forty three. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we're good to have you back and stuff. Yeah, Lisa's, thank you. Lisa's back. Margaret's here. And we got uh, um, Katie. Kathleen. Isn't that Katie? Or Katie? Oh, well. Anyway, uh, we're waiting for a few more people yet to show up. Okay. Uh, last week's. Uh, catastrophe kind of fun thing we did uh, uh you know after we got done with it i mean we left and stuff you know we put in these uh birch trees kind of warm and stuff and you know i got it all going and going god there's just something that's not working here these guys are not standing out no matter you know if i make them darker they're just going to be post and if i don't you know get them to stand out then you know they don't work it doesn't work they were cool they were a lot cooler than i i painted them so i added a lot of uh some white and some blue to my uh uh red mix i had made kind of a warm purple even and was able to get that in here in little segments so a lot of times when you need to just, you know, shift something and stuff, you don't need to paint, repaint every dot, you know, going down a, a thing. Sometimes it's just, you can, you can do it by just painting little areas or something and uh, sh the color could shift. You just gotta, you know, so it's not like, you know, daunting effort to change something. Sometimes it's, you can do, you can get by uh, simply sometimes, I guess. So oh, I think you know. it's beautiful. I think it's, uh, I didn't do it, but I think it's very impressionistic and you, you makes you want to look back at that mountain back there. Good. See, yeah. 
that's that's why we're glad to have you back, Lynette. <laughs> I didn't want to try it though. <laughs> it was an easy one. That one and the other one were you know. <laughs> you know, everything is sort of easy, but then you know it's always gonna be a little battle in every painting. And uh, that's what we're gonna have tonight. And we take on this one. Uh, it's I tried to get, do a simple one. I wanted to do something a little simple. Um, you know, old pier, wore it out, wore out, wearing out, you know, be taking, its, uh, taking a beating by the, the ocean over time here. Um, and yet we still have, you know, a seagull perching on it and you got some nice waves crashing against it. And you got some dynamic things. It's a really nice kind of shape and stuff going in there. And so I thought it would be kind of fun to paint, you know, uh, get everybody a good shot because, you know, Anne's, Anne, Anne's a little slow, so we got to make sure she gets the painter right. <laughs> Kathy's a little slow. We got to make sure she's gone. We don't even talk about Lynette and Lisa. So uh, let's pull this thing up. And uh, I think I insulted everyone there. So... Uh, <laughs> I think I did my job. So this is it. See, I love the colors. That's the thing is I, I like the blue against the green, the warm yellows, you know, greens here, some of the ochres and that. Um, and then you got some nice beautiful dark, simple darks. You know, it's not a good, what we call a good, great photo, but sometimes the best things you do are from the worst photos because you're not, you know, forced, you're not sticking with the photo as much as you think, you know, you, you would if you got a, you know, photographer's photo where the thing's just already art and you feel like you can't change it. But this thing, you know, anything's a plus. That's the thing is, and so we'll start with this, see how it goes, see how loose we can get. I really want to see about getting kind of loose over here and stuff, there's not, nothing to tell us uh too much about anything there's a couple boards you know a couple planks we've got we've got you know pillars sticking up out of there you see a lot of barnacles on these things i love that stuff you know this kind of stuff you know and then we got a little bit of crashing wave sorry about you know that's like i said it's just not the best photo i'm not sure where they showed it but they got some water on their camera but you can see where it's just kind of you know lost its little uh, uh, edge here and stuff on the outsides and the crashing wave, which is okay because if we focus there, you saw if that was a really, it's going to be, we'll probably, it's going to end up being more in focus when we don't, we paint it, but uh, we'll still be able to get back to our buddy up here, you know, and make the story of him being up there by himself, a loner, you know, and waiting for these guys over here to be filled up with uh, some friends, but uh, you know, that's the thing. Uh, on Saturday, we painted us one seagull. Uh, and uh, basically we, we could, you could easily take this guy and paint him and on a couple of these other ones if you want. And uh, you, you almost, if you're painting him freehand like we do, you know, you're almost guaranteed he's not gonna look exactly the same, but uh, and it's really easy just by to change, you know, the, the angle of uh, the bird, if you straighten them up, you know, or, you know, you, you cock a wing out or something like that. Uh, you know, you got, got it made. Or you, or you go find one to have one just, you know, landing and going, hey, I'm going to land right here. Oh, you know, kind of <laughs> like that. A little you know a little goonie bird or something like that um such so i was thinking and i said the color was i was talking looking at the color in this thing too and you got blue you got you got kind of a greenish kind of orange yellow kind of green you know kind of goofy there uh And then you got the whites, you got the warm, warm whites. Uh, 
and I, you know, there's not a whole lot of different colors in here and stuff. So I was thinking we could even do this, try to do this in a very limited palette itself. You know, we'll just, we could start with uh, like, uh, I would say a uh, blue, green, phalo green, ochre, uh, and probably a red of some sort. You could use, use cad red or you can use a, a oxide red. Probably oxide red, probably would be better. I see that in here and stuff. So that's where I was thinking we could go, you know, do a, do a simple thing. That way, you know, you know, you guys won't be complaining about all the color mixes we're going to have to make. So, you know <laughs> me, I'm trying to always try to take care of you guys. Uh, yeah, we're just a bunch of complainers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you, you guys, yeah, no, you guys, you guys are pretty easy. You guys are pretty simple, I must say. Uh, design, I, I, I think that's the whole thing. It kind of drew me to this thing is the, 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 the design of this thing, the way it turns around, you know, comes around and comes back to this guy. Uh, I like that. You got a nice, nice arc of a wave here crashing in. We could have some fun with that. See, there's a lot of things we can have fun with. And uh, since it's a simpler type of uh, painting, and since I'm talking so so much and going to waste everybody's time here, <laughs> no time to paint because you kept talking. Mm -hmm. I hate that. <laughs> um, well, let's get over to the, you guys have any questions on this? Okay. I do, we well, I just over. always, I always think to myself, why did he pick this picture? But you explained some of it because you want to teach us certain things. But, but when somebody looks at this, what will be the interest for them? <laughs> you mean, where's the money in this? <laughs> How am I going to sell them this? <laughs> Yes, yes, Lynette, we know where you're coming from. I don't yeah, want to well, waste, I don't want to waste any cardboard on this. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I, yeah. Why did, did I pick this? I, I don't know. My, my madness might have gone crazy here. I just figured it would be, <laughs> something you guys might like but now you guys don't like it I'll, I'll i can pick out i'm gonna pick out something really hard for next week then. Teach no 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 i'm not saying i don't like it what it no, what, no yes you are well what i am saying is that this scene is a scene that everybody's seen you know it's it's so and it i think that draws you and i think you know the colors and and the peacefulness and of you know the calmness it, you know i think it, it draws people in that's what i think and a bird or two keep going there lynette keep so going you go. you're trying to get yourself out of that hole <laughs> <laughs> yes all of a sudden i love it it's the best photo i've ever seen <laughs> now it's it's a little bit of everything on this one because i wanted to you know it's not a fabulous photo so we're not locked into a lot of things uh we got you know only one bird maybe we can make it two birds maybe I can make it three birds maybe you put a bird on each one of those i've seen ber seen birds on each post com very common uh i just didn't want to you know work you guys too hard you guys might never come back so <laughs> I just figured there's a lot of looseness stuff in here that keep you guys from getting too tight and some really uh, exciting things here. I see exciting okay. things, but maybe I can turn you guys. We will see. <laughs> Talk about turning. Let's go over to the palette and uh, talk about this single bird. If we have time, we're going to paint one. If we have time, maybe we'll paint two. If we have a lot of time, paint three. You know, if you're if you're out on the West Coast, you've got to paint five. <laughs> see? see how that works? Okay, if you're on the East Coast, 
one. Anyway, uh, here we go. Colors, like I said, I got white. I got, I got Pamela white out today. I don't even have titanium out. I just kind of just had whatever I left out. Uh, Cad light yellow. Cad red uh, light. This is some just regular cat cat red uh, medium out uh, from another painting. I have a little bit of yellow uh, cat orange here. You know, I'm telling you all these colors, but I tell you, we're not we're probably going to only paint with a few colors. So it's like uh, you know, you're wasting your time. I'm wasting my time telling you all these things. Now I'm looking for ochre because I don't have ochre out here. Okay, um, this is supposed to be yellow ochre. And then uh, next to that is transparent oxide. Next to that is uh, that could be also could be uh, uh, you know kind of kind of terra rosa, Venetian even. I have to pull back, pull out Venetian again. I get so much Venetian left over. Uh, alizarin crimson, uh, cobalt blue hue, or blue. Persian blue, one of the blues, dark blue. Uh, I have burnt sienna, burnt umber yet, and uh, phthalo green, and a little more burnt umber back up there. So, all right. Like I was saying, this could be done if we want. It's just blue, blue, oxide red, phthalo green, uh, yellow ochre, and white. Hey James. Yeah. Um, the phthalo green. Are you using? Because I was looking at my tubes today, and I have like a blue phthalo green, and then I have a yellow phthalo green, and then I have yeah. I, think I have the yeah. I'm pretty sure mine's the blue blue phthalo green. Does it say green? Yeah, green oh, blue, blue, green blue, green blue. Okay, great. Green blue. <laughs> Because to get the aqua, don't you kind of need that one? Or not? Yeah, it comes in. Okay. It comes in handy. Okay, thanks. No worries. <laughs> she just called it out. We're going to go for our first color. We're going to go uh, blue, phthalo green. This is going to be. Looks like it's on the blue side. That's going to be really close. I'm going to do one more on the green side, just a little bit. That won't be probably be much. That green, phthalo green should be a lot stronger than this blue because this blue is not that strong of a color. There we go. Just maybe just, I'm going to cheat it a little bit more. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I cheated it a lot. Anyway, just for now, we're going with those two colors. So one's blue, phthalo and blue. Uh, and this is blue and phthalo, mostly phthalo. When we add white to them, they'll be end up being all these colors back in here. But we're gonna leave them dark for now. Make our darks first. We need some red ones and purple ones for this down here, right? So, and I said, if we are just using these four colors, basically we'll try to do it. Let's see if we can do it. Oxide red and blue. See, we are gonna get browns, nice browns out of that. You know, if you were going out and doing uh, plain air and stuff, this is, you know, one of the things you try to do is do a simple palette and not go too far, don't go crazy. Here we go. We got here. Somebody said somebody's trying to get in. Okay, nothing. Sorry, guys. Talking to myself. Thought I was. Somebody was knocking on their uh, classroom door to get in. But no. So oxide red and blue. More oxide red. A little bit more blue. Just doing our plain mixes. Now we're going to go oxide red and green. Uh, 
this is going to become one of my better colors and stuff. You're going to see this all over it, all over in here. Well, <laughs> at this dark stage, it's, you won't be able to see it. But it, I guarantee it will be all over this thing. So I'm going to make sure I have one in the green side, one on the red side. All right. Oh, that's almost all of our colors. We are doing plain air, like I said. There'd be, you only use like four colors. You can try to make about a dozen colors up and you're about done. You don't have to do too many more. These guys right here, this combination of colors right here will do pretty much all the darks in this painting. Uh, and then when we bring these guys down, basically if we want to do it really simple, I'll take down these blues, blue grays, or these blue and greens, and knock them on like, let's try and get them, they are probably right around a six. Put a little bit of white into them, try to get them to a, a value of six. As you can see, a little dark yet, which is okay, good. So this one is just on the blue side to see how it goes. It might need to go bluer, but I'm shooting it for right in here and stuff. It's right now it's at the mid-tone. I'm gonna do the same with the phalo green. Mm, that's good. That's good. I'm going to take these guys down one more step, too. They say that these guys are really good, that these guys are like right here in the middle. They fit really well. I think this blue one probably is oop, green in it. I'm just going to add just a little bit of blue to it anyway to cool it off. Just one more step. That it was going to be a little warm. Yeah, that's beautiful. That works. Okay, I'm going to take it down one more step though. Just add white down here and then just take a piece of these guys. Leave it really kind of bright. Get them to about a three, I would say. Let me see if that's three. No, that's probably about a four or five. Wow. Let's, if I take it all the way to three, boy, that's, uh, that's, that's a long way to go. But if you look at it down in here, where I was wanting to uh, end up using it at the bottom here, except as you can tell, I'm going to have to really lighten this down. So let's just leave it there for now because we're going to have to catch a couple other colors. A little off here. Basically, I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to get uh, get some purples going here. Some oxide red and blue. We'll get some gray purples here. And then on the blue side, we'll get some blue purples. You'll start seeing that down in here. I might want to cheat these guys a little bit because, you know, look at the color wise, when they get this is really a good gray. You know, that's, you can see that's going to be all over in here. But I probably want to take both these guys, they're very neutral. These guys are really close to a gray than, you know, really color being in them. So this one I might take. And go back to the red, make sure the red's in it. So put a little more oxide red into it. So I get more of a, I do get a purple. And this one, just a little more blue into it. Or it is a blue purple, not just a blue gray. But you know, nothing wrong with the blue gray. I mean, that probably just save a piece of that anyway, because that's a really good new, that's a nice, if I was shooting, for a neutral gray like that, I probably wouldn't get it. So, 
same here, just pushing this, pushing the red in this one a little stronger here. Because you're going to see it all over in these things in the next step. And the next step is up here. Instead of adding, we haven't touched our ochre yet, have we? Mm. Oh, yes, you guys caught me. Okay, ochre. We're going to put ochre in each one of these guys. So these are phthalo green, oxide red, right here, just a little bit of ochre, about half and half. Half and half. And you start getting these greens. This this one, of course, is you can start to see where you can definitely get it in here. Okay, I'm not mad. I'm crazy, but I'm not mad. This is uh, on the red side. Phthalo green, oxide red on the red side of green. And this is ochre going in. And you can see where that's going to hit. Oh my God, he's not mad. He's crazy, but he's not mad. It's good to know. All right. This painting basically done. I mean, every all the colors we need now are pretty much on the board. I mean, yeah, we didn't do. We didn't do. Let me see. I haven't done this color. Let me. We didn't do any regular uh, red. In oxide, and, I mean ochre in ox oxide. See, so you should get an orange. You can get an orange just by putting in enough ochre, just a little bit of things. That's going to be right in the ballpark. Just going to be a little red, a little red, or yellow, more yellow. You go back and forth. That's the thing about you using a uh, one of these uh, palettes and stuff. Yeah, it's it is kind of simple. You just got to get used to it, and you know, know that you know what you've got limited colors. You think you have limited color, but when you start take mixing with your piles, intermixing, you double your number. You can triple, quadruple your number of paints. It's pretty. You know, you can pretty go anywhere with this stuff. Uh, I'm gonna add out whites, and that will be it. See how easy this one was? I'm really gonna go high key whites, unique colors, and I'll go. I'll go over my colors one more time. I'm just gonna take a little scraping of this. Uh, this is. Ochre and uh, oxide red, phthalo green, just a scraping of it. I want this kind of a, not even taupe, just a warm white, All right? Warm white, just lightly anything in it. You know, you could almost just do this without just ochre and white too. But I was gonna do that over here. Pretty much just put this as just a little red in it. See, just that red, just, just a little strong. So let's take and make sure we get it down here and stuff. What you're going to end up doing here, we're going to get all the highlights, all the foam, and most of the bird out of this co these colors down here now. Going with a little blue, just too much blue I grabbed again. You're going to find this. Definitely in a lot of this uh, foam in the water and stuff, traces of, you know, backwash and stuff, that little foamy water, little things and stuff. You definitely going to see these, these two colors. I always find beautiful work, beautiful and that kind of stuff. And that those are just burnt uh, oxide red and blue. These are my rich blues, my, my high key whites, pink or no, can, uh, oxide, phthalo orange, phthalo green. Wow, I finally got it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's going to be nice in this stuff. That's going to be nice in these, these warms and stuff. And same with this one, it's a little bit bluer. 
I always like to have a high key blue. Because it always goes well. It really just sets off your high key yellows. Okay. Really close to being done color wise. These are pretty much all the colors we're going to need uh, for this. You can get all the, po the these posts pretty much out of this color. These, these two colors, these ochres, and just a little phthalo green in them. I mean, you can, you can still go back in here and make mid-tones and stuff if you needed to, but if you want to take a little piece of this and make a mid-tone, you probably don't land it too many places, but you probably, you might need it right here. Wow. Okay. Shh, shh, shh. More ochre in it, and that'll be fun. I'm done. Okay, only thing is, I like to have a couple extra colors in my palette that, you know, aren't showing up yet. Want to be just straight blue, straight blue and white, no phalo in it. find that this is a great color. A little bit strong there, but I like that. I like to have blue white, really cool. High key color, cool on the cool side. I want one on the red side, so I'll take oxide in white. Now I'll make a pink. It makes a really nice kind of, ro you know, rosy, dusty rose kind of pink here. So, and oops, Joe, I tell you, it's a strong color. I mean, you just start take, taking over. That should have been white, white, white. Okay, well, what I'm hoping to do is get a little bit of that in this guy and in here and some other places. So, so it's always good to have. And then ochre and white, just a little bit of ochre and white. Oops, a little red in there. I don't want all red in this thing. Too much red. Just a little bit of ochre and a lot of white. That's probably too much ochre even. Just wanted to get it way up there on the scale. Just a little different and cleaner than that one. And It'll come in handy in, in, in the, when we do our final little cleanups and stuff, when you start needing clean, I like to have, like I think of these guys right here as my little clean cleanup palette at the end of the little fixes. Uh, they have the little, as you can tell, the, the palette's kind of very um, grayed down. There's a few brighter colors over here, a couple ones over here. But these guys have a little bit of oomph to them. And those guys I like to put in at the end to really, you know, you know, bring it to life and stuff to get the highlights to kick up, to kick this bird out, you know, make him really stand out or, um, you know, make the, make the wave work right. So I need one little teeny accent color, more blue than white. I was just looking at this spot right here and I go, oh, that's just blue and white. And well, I didn't make it. I, I, yeah, I'm good. No, let's go. Let's go paint. You guys ready to paint? You guys any questions? Let me go through the colors. Okay. Phthalo green and blue. This is on the blue side. This is with a little bit of white. This is with a little bit more white. This is with a lot of white. Phthalo green and uh, blue on the phthalo green side. A little bit of white, a little bit more white, a lot of white. Oxide red uh, with blue. And this is blue with oxide red. Both come down with a little bit of white. And just a little bit more blue on each one on this side, a little more red on this side, and then run down one more step. These are uh, phthalo green and oxide red. These two. This is on the green side coming down with the uh, ochre mixed with a little bit of ochre, more ochre. And then we have uh, oxide red and phthalo green with a little bit of ochre and then a little white and a little bit more ochre. And these guys came down with a little bit more white. Um, down here, just as blue and white, a little bit more white, a little more white. 
This is oxide red and white, and this is uh, ochre and white. That's all we need for this painting. Now we just now it's all up to brush strokes and having fun and being exciting. So let's see what we do here. One second. Let me get my thing back up. There we go. Oops, let me open it up. Uh, usually I tone my canvas, I might do ochre, might be fun. Let me bring this down a little bit. I'll bring you guys in a little bit. Yeah, I get my foot in there. Here we go. This back up. Y'all see it? Yes, this is Lynette. Lynette hates his paint, this thing. So we got to make it work somehow. Oh, come on. I don't hate it. I, I'm intrigued. <laughs> now she's intrigued. There we go. <laughs> we'll we see. <laughs> yes, I'm just putting out some oil to tone my canvas. I am going to put out, since we're only using these those few colors. That's pretty cool. I like that. So I'm put red out. Red and red and just a little ochre maybe. That'll make if I these two together will make a burnt sienna ish color. Okay, you know, I'm gonna keep it light, keep it airy. You know, so we can do you know cheaper paints and classes and stuff. I mean, really, you can you can get a lot painted just with that. I mean, we were talking about doing people, painting people, and uh, you can do a, a Zorn palette, which is only two, three colors in white, which would be interesting. try that I no one jumped at that but I, you know <laughs> hey we do it you're all gonna be in on it you have to paint people not easy it's tough to do it's tough to do on zoom uh, painting people because of you know it's just a drawing drawing people out takes a lot a lot of effort and uh, if you don't draw it out right you kind of, you know, you kind of screw the pooch. That's where dogs are pretty easy to paint because, you know, they don't, you know, talk back too much. There we go. I'm just lightly painting it. This is, I used uh, oxide red with a little ochre in it. it made it kind of like, like I said, a burnt sienna. What I want to do is just kind of just leave the leave a little bit of the mess down here this this that orange and stuff down here i don't i, I made that color but i did not uh, i added white to it or i did not make that color so there's still colors to make that's the fun thing about using a limited palette even you can go as long as you really want i mean you can make uh you know huge number of colors I'm trying to think. I can't remember how many you can make but you know if you put you can make tons 
Okay, I'm gonna start off my uh, blue reds, uh, blue and oxide uh, first. I want to put the put this uh, stabilizing uh, corner in, uh, just really dark. You know, you you know, it's my darkest dark. So just putting it in, you know, drawing it out. I guess I could have drawn it out, but that's another thing I on this one. I didn't think I'd have to draw too much. You know, really, all you have to do is uh, paint that guy. Every the posts kind of paint themselves. So yeah, it's a I'm a slacker, but I thought it was. Found it to be interesting. I don't know why. I just did feel, feel like this is interesting because I. It's nice because of all these colors. I know we're going to go together really nice. I'm going to even think about the shadows down in here too a little bit. Get get a little darkness in the shadows ready too, just for a heck, heck of it. Uh, posts going in. A little bit up there, that in the post. I'm not going to put those posts in because those are a pain in the butt to paint around. This section, you know, is a, is a pretty simple section. Um, so I got a lot of uh, blue and uh, oxide red in it right now. You know, I'll probably put the oxide red in this little area right in here a little bit more. Uh, because I want that to jump a little bit. I mean, I want that to come forward in space, and, you know, and you're gonna see it, you know, when you do hit a couple of these highlights here and stuff, and it, they'll, it'll jump. Right now with no white, you know, it's still gonna be very dark in here in this corner. Okay, now the cool thing is going with greens. I'm gonna go with some oxide red and green and put that in this back guy right here. A little bit of oxide red and green. I got a lot of oxide red still on here and stuff. Get a little greenish in this in these boards here and in here. That's the kind of stuff I saw I liked. I saw the, the color combinations that were uh, kind of fun. And I figured, you know, you could really, you know, spend some time and get some, see some really good stuff uh, without uh, working too hard. You know, painting, paint wise and stuff, you sit, see what all these, you know, simple palette can do. And stuff. So when we go out and do plain air in the winter, you know, you guys be prepared for it. You guys know what to expect. <laughs> you know, just got to show up or you fail. Um, <laughs> I'm going to put this. This is that blue and ox and, and phthalo green and stuff. And I'm going to put it right here in this little section here that goes up to this, up to this post here. And, uh, into the shadow of the water a little bit. So everything's like pure strength. There's all, you know, nothing holding back here. We're not getting a very light yet. No white involved in this, in this show yet. What are you using? Don't have to have... Oh. I'm using a brush. Thank you. <laughs> what color? Uh, okay, I'll tell you. What... I used right here is uh, just phthalo green and blue. Oh, okay. Straight phthalo. And I'm putting it only right in the shadow area, right in here. There's a little shadow caused by this thing and stuff, and that's where I was putting it. You say that, and I got to bring this red up a little higher. I see it. I did not take it up high enough. In a few spots here, this little section here. This can be fun. I'm darkening the back end, making sure that I don't have anything too bright 
that's pretty good. That's good where it is. I don't want anything too close to the edge that's going to be light uh, because it will draw your attention to the edge of the painting. And it usually takes takes their eye right right away from the painting. So it's always good to do that. Okay, there we go. That's good. Uh, the next thing, what would I do next? What should I what should I paint next? Um, who should I talk? Lisa, what would you paint next? Oh boy, probably that background water. There you go, girl. I knew you'd come up with the right answer. Ooh, Let's a... get some of that water in. Let's get the, we're going to just paint it blue. We're not going to worry about the old greens in there yet. Greens will go in just so easy after you have the blue in. But I'm going to put a little bit of dark blue in uh, at the top just to settle the painting down so it doesn't, uh, you know, the eye doesn't drift too far and stuff. So if we, you know, up and off again, we can just put this little bit dark. This is just oxide red and blue. I have phthalo green and blue uh, right now. And that's just the last of it. That's the last of my dark color. It just got enough oil in it that it's thinned out, you know, and I'm just gonna sort of bring down a stripe, but I'm gonna blend it out just a little bit before I go to the uh, color, I, the mid-tone version of this, where I added just a little bit of white to it. I'm gonna put the blue version. There's a blue version, there's a green version, right? The green version, just because of the yellow in it, it's gonna come forward just a hair. Uh, so I'll be using the blue, blue and white version, or the heavier on the blue side, to about right here, about three down here and stuff. Uh, and then I'll switch over just for a little little bit to the green side. That's what I'm thinking. But I'm gonna push, push this back into the dark, just like if I was doing a sky. And if you can see what's happening, even at this stage with a big brush like this, by dragging it like this across, even though it's in the wrong tone and everything else. If I, that was green, it would be this, it would end up being that stuff. So just put it in, put it in lightly. Don't put it in too heavy. Don't put it in too, uh, too much oil too. You know, I am working on linen, which, you know, just tends to grab, you know, it's it has a it's funny it has a you know less tooth than than um, than canvas, but it grabs the paint so much better than canvas. Okay, now I'm going to go right in here. This is the just the phalo green side coming in, and uh, same value, just a little more green in it. What that's going to do. It's just, you know, I don't even have to put it in too heavy down here because there's a lot of orange green comes in here and stuff. So I'll kick it only when I really need it. It's only, you know, into this fence area. It doesn't even show yet. It's not a fence, but it, you know, this almost could be just because it's built like a fence. There's a board going across it and uh, top of it. Yeah, and I'm just gonna blend it out a little bit on the back side here. Blend everything together here. If you want, this be a good time to, you know, you wanna start cutting into this, into your uh, boards here and stuff. So getting a few creaks and cracks and stuff here, it's okay. To wipe them out. A lot of good paint. This is a really good point to do this kind of stuff just because it's you got a lot of paint, you got nice heavy duty things or other things gonna go over this stuff. So any little uh you know goofy mistakes you make are gonna be covered up really quickly and easily. That's my thinking. 
I've been known to be wrong. Ask my wife. Yes. Constant. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. There we go. We got the pity laugh. There we go. There we go. There. Okay. Uh, let's see. We're going to bring back a little bit of life to the top a little bit. Then we'll bring the green in there and see what that does. Looks like it could be. Just twist your brush, run your brush a few different ways. Just twist it off. Okay. Probably a little bit brighter. Start to see these one spots in here stuff. I think it might go a little more green. Be stronger with a little green accent to it than a total blue one. Bringing that back in. Uh, you know, I'm trying to think of a nice way to put this about waves and stuff. Like if there was a, you know, a special, you know, little nugget of information I could give you about painting, you know, waves. Uh, you know, they are basically arcs. Um, and, you know, and there's a rhythm to them. And it's kind of almost, you know, like, one row you'll have just almost it's some it's like a cartoon almost in its real life you know just it, that waves are go this up and they have that little arc and stuff like that and then right behind them they have that same thing going on but it's just staggered a little bit you know you find that's really pretty close to what what happens all right uh, next I'm gonna go with the uh, my next color is phthalo green, oxide red, and ochre. Uh, this is on the phthalo green side. Might need to put a little bit more ochre in it. But I, was, I just want to see what happens here. I want to see how dark it is. Yeah, it's it's a little dark, but it 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 it's uh in here, this kind of area, that's where it hits. This color hits. This color hits right here. I don't think it'll have the, you know, up here, back in here. I think it's going to have, I thought it was going to be have to be lightened because I didn't think these two are the same colors. And I was really thinking this color here, it was going to have to be lightened be, from going back because of uh, it needed some more ochre to get the green to shoot, shoot, show through. And down here, as you can see, uh, it doesn't show, you know, the ochre doesn't show through. You know, I mean, you get the green, the two to work as a, this kind of green, but it's working really well up there. And that's, you know, I'm like, I'm, it's one of those always optical illusions that happen in paint. I would not have, could not, anticipate this being feeling lighter and everything else just because it's going against a light a little bit lighter colors yeah. this just goes to show i know nothing about this crap i'm just making it up you know that's definitely what's happening here that's why we're about here illu yeah illusions and stuff i you know i'm just comic relief I think uh, at this point, um, yeah. Uh, um, so I'm going to be painting, like, uh, painting right through these guys, trying to just do big shapes, seeing these big bottom shapes and stuff, putting this kind of like if you just drew a line around this green area here, and just did that shape, painted that shape in. Uh, don't worry about the, 
the water shape down in here, how that comes in. Just paint that whole shape there. That's what I do. And then right behind it, there's another little shape that comes into it right in here. And that's just, I'll paint that that same color. You know, and then it just kind of like comes back and then there's just this one little snaky kind of shape right in here and goes all the way off. Now that one might not come in as good as, you know, I wanted it to because it's going to take a lot of paint to get over uh, this, this stuff. Up here, it seems like it went in pretty easy. You know, I might just, you know, it's a big enough spot and it's early in the painting to kind of just pull off a little bit of green there and just, uh, you know, work it in here. It's kind of like a simple V if you need to. You have spots like that. And then you can see what happens when you take the regular paint, put it on without mixing. Except for I do have a lot of oil in my paint. I grabbed a lot of oil that time. So just keep it simple. Get these big kind of spots in. See, this is, this one has, it's good though. This has just a little more red in it. This is the oxide red uh, side of the phthalo green and ochre right here. And you're going to see these, how these guys can you know, start to work together. You know, at one point here really soon, I'm going to have to really, I'm going to have to, you know, place my, uh, my posts in here. But I'd like to get, before I do that, you know, just get all this, uh, gets this work done here behind it. Mix up, I need some more ochre and phthalo green light. Or this, this color coming up here. That thing. Come over, just gonna basically he's gonna keep going as a line. Okay, just gonna work a little bit of green in the back here, a little bit. If I just touch it lightly. It should mix with the, it should mix nicely with the, the blue, darker blue back in here. Mix it nicely, did not do nicely, just did uh, heavy. And I was hoping to just get some dashes and dots back in here, but uh, we will see. Doesn't have to be just, you could, any place you want to just, you know, kind of not have to do too much back here. And that's that area over here. I call, uh, I, I kind of like look at this, the waves and go, okay, there's like right behind this bird, there's four little, there's four dashes and stuff. I'll do those four dashes. They're just staggered about the same size. They just stagger up, stagger in between and go right there. And that tells you right, tells me right there, if I drew it right, the bird, the post should go right in about here. And then everything underneath, those guys I see are blurs. You know, those are the only ones that have any uh, hardness to them at all paint wise. Everything in here can just be a, basically a smudge of greens together coming to over to here. And then there's just a little whoosh, whoosh, whoosh of 
of that kind of stuff going on right here behind. And it's just taking your brush and just pushing it once and going through it, just going back and forth through this mess. Mm -hmm. And creating this whole shape. You don't have to be too great because you're still gonna put still gonna pull out and put a post in here. So I still got, you know, the nice thing is I still got a lot of paint, nice paint, good paint, you know, to start putting in these things. And the other thing is it's so, you know, you know, being with a limited palette, you know, colors are so, you know, easy to make, you know, you can make these should be able to make these colors pretty simple. You know, probably could use a little, go a little bit more. There you go. Pokery at the bottom here in the sand. Okay, as I go down, this is again, phalo green with ochre in it coming down in here, coming in and around this pylon here and stuff into the shadow area. Just gonna use it to kind of call out that guy a little bit here going around him a little bit and then uh, into the shadow just kind of blends into the shadow a little bit as I come down though just add it becomes more uh, ochre and red a little bit ish in here there's going to be some white that goes in between these two and that is, you know, the hard part. Leaving this area here, you can see how I kind of love to clean. Um, that is just where the white of the froth of the crashing wave goes. And that's all I have to do. More ochre, maybe. At the bottom here, just to give that painting something to grab onto, some white paint to mix with and have some fun. Yeah. So this is just fun, you know, You know, getting everything to kind of sit right and then explode and stuff. It's like, you know, putting a M80 in a in a can and running away, seeing what happens. Simple, simple stuff. Okay, on top of this wave, uh, yeah, it's very green. And there is some more ochreish colors on top, but you're also going to find reflections from the from uh, the sky in there, and that's what drives this little action here. This little blues and cools that come in here and zing around these things. Um, that's going to be cool. Before I get to that, though, I do have to, you know. And now I, you know, I got pretty much everything in here. I got got some stuff going on here. I probably could put in, you know, a couple more things like this. I like just just to get this kind of stuff in here before I, I'm in my final little things. But you know, I hate painting around things, but we're still going to have to paint around some things. So. That's okay. That's good enough because I'm going to have to do it anyway. All right. Um, let's see. This guy comes out a little farther. This guy's going to come out about here. A little farther than that, about to here. You guys drew it out. You know, I really don't care how you guys 
you know, get your, your paint, your drawings and stuff like under, under the board and, and into the painting and stuff. So, you know, any, any way you have to do it, it's great. I just been drawing forever. So I kind of like, don't do that. Don't need to do a lot of prehand drawing. Well, that's where this guy goes, and it's almost a perfect width. It's a little wide. You can start to see how it goes. Basically, it's just going to step up one step back here, uh, probably about here. Basically, you just have to draw it straight down a little bit. Give it a little bit of a turn stop it before that thing so it goes back into space so these guys perspective wise you know work together and the same thing with the last one this guy's a little tighter slightly different angle in the water now still pretty good stops way back here And we've got the littler ones for the other side, right in here. But these guys are in the angles, going down into our dark spots. Oh, shoot. That's what I don't want to do. Yeah, good enough. And then my last one, barely can see it over here. This kind of keeps, keeps you know, we got a lot of stuff over here too. So I'm just going to. Bring him in and just give him a little bit of love. A little heavy. Small. Okay, now I can, might just pull out just a little bit of paint on, light wise on this guy a little bit. He's going to get some light there and then there's a crack. Get a little bit more light here. You know, we've got some froth going on in here. A little bit of fun stuff, and I'll get that stuff. This, that's nothing. Okay. All right, and then we got our bird too. I'm not going to put the bird in till then. We'll figure out how much time we have left, and uh, I don't know. See if we can come up with a nice arrangement. Maybe we do put, you know, one high, one low, and. Now, stop. I don't know, but you know, whatever you know, Lynette thinks will sell the painting. We're, we're, that's where we're going. <laughs> and I sell so many. <laughs> well, you had the eye. We're going with that. All right. And if you have this thing, you can pull out of you know any drawing mistakes. You can put it like that. So this, everybody's right here, right? We've got all the good stuff ahead of us. Anyway, this is, you know, this is, there are so many fun little things. Like for me, I like looking at this color, seeing the colors that are in here. They've got these grays and stuff. I want to get in here into these darks here. This warm, these warms in the very front of these pillars just so much fun to you know you know you got to put them in loose and live with them and that's what i always like to do i like to put these guys in really quick and, and not worry about um to get them in nice and stuff you want to dip your brush in oil first before you grab your paint because you'll be going over a lot of wet paint and i'm going to do the this front little area here where you know you got a little noogie of a of, of a broken uh, post here and some other stuff, and you know I got a lot of nice wet paint. I want to just push it, push my brush forward before I go backwards, and then just pull it down. That way, I get that rough uh, 
opening right away. And I'll do the same thing right next to it. Just push it up, come back down. And get this one thing. Thing is just to leave a hair of space between these things. Yeah, just a hair a line and stuff as you drag it down and it becomes something else all of a sudden it's just not the same little uh, thing all of a sudden you got you recreated this thing in three sp three strokes basically I'm gonna be doing three strokes maybe probably adding one you know here and there got to come down here there's just one little spot over here and for me it's just a lot of this is just how light I hold my brush, barely holding on to it. A lot of times this brush will fall right out of my hand. And all the time, I'm always picking it up because I'm barely holding it. I'm just pushing it and guiding it. Letting the, you know, letting the, the oil and brush mix. Because if I push hard, that really pushes, mix the mix. If I push lightly, the brush does the mixing. And, uh, you know, I just kind of, I'm going to get this spot here. I'm just going to work my way back uh, and get this light spot and get this little formation around here and stuff. That has a nice edge of light coming in here, shadow and stuff, where these guys are kind of like blinking up and stuff. So that kind of tells me if I follow this line, this kind of shadow line up. Tells me right where that guy's going to end up being and where I got to put this, my brush down and where I got to stop it. Basically, I got to stop it right in here for these guys to line up. The color I'm using there, these are just, uh, that's blue and oxide red and white and stuff right here. Looks a little, little cool. Might put uh, ochre into it. Just a little piece of ochre into that. That'll give it kind of a warm green. And that's very good barn wood kind of color too. A lot of times I like burnt sienna and burnt umber for my, you know, barn wood, this kind of wood stuff. So kind of makes you, uh, makes me try other mixes, but you know, oxide red and blue is pretty, a pretty common mix for me. I'm not really out of my comfort comfort zone, I guess I'm trying to say. But uh, just that little ochre in, into the mix kind of really kind of gives it that. Well, will give me that that warmth that I'm looking for. Uh, this is goes also is going to go on the top of the edge of this of this pier and stuff. I'm just pushing using my brush tip. And going down it. What I want to do, make sure though, is I don't make, you know, I want to make sure I don't have a highway. And I'm making different strokes, kind of little, you know, pushing these guys together so they're not all the same going down. So keep it interesting. You can go with more, a little more ochre, do a little more red change it up so I don't have I'm not using the exact same color all the time even when I'm doing the side things coming down here just doing a little light area coming in here so so this is what you know drew me I guess to it it's this kind of little stuff I like uh, painting shadows in light and um, that's what I saw. There was just this very interesting light on these back pylons because they're just so dark. But there was just enough information there. And uh, I thought it was, you know, a perfect, uh, you know, brush, uh, brush technique painting. If you just do it right, if you do it right, just let's put some green in this one too. A little more green of my brush and straighten it down. Did not get these guys in. 
got to put in this rest of this pillar or this bracing here. And you can see it's reflecting a lot of water and stuff. So at the very end of it, I'm starting with, uh, I started with uh, uh, blue and uh, oxide red mix, beginning with the oxide red. And then as I get all the way to the outside here, this is where I'm putting in blue and uh, phthalo green. Mix, just blend them, blend the two together. So at the very tip, back tip of this thing, it's going to be phthalo green and blue, very dark. Just blend these two together slightly. Very interesting. Let's see about bringing that back in into some of this stuff down here, this back pylon too. Might be nice to have that in there. Check and making sure my oil is not running here on these things because I did use a lot of oil. Nothing too too sharp going off the painting. Okay. All right. I'm gonna put the light on this guy. Um, I see him as oxide red and phthalo green and just a little bit of white, maybe a little bit, let me see, maybe just a little more white and a little more, uh, some, uh, ochre-ish to it. Just a little bit too much, but that is in the vein. That'll be fun. Let's see if I can get this guy to stand out. That's the thing is. Usually it's just dragging my brush and then rocking it off at the very bottom instead of just dragging it, stopping it, just turning it, turning my brush and rocking it off at the end. I might go a little darker. I might go with the full strength of. Uh, what did what color did you, did you use uh, just before that, please? Right here. Yeah. On this guy. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, phthalo green, oxide red, yellow ochre, a lot of white, and some white, and a little bit more yellow ochre into it. That's all this color is going to be. And just going back into it a little bit here and there, get the correct some shapes. Gonna put get a little more red in the bottom, some more oxide red right here. And shaft right there. Look for a little more oxide red here and there and stuff throughout this thing. That could be darker blue, purple. In there. There we go. Um, from here, I'm just going to keep going to paint the pillars. And then from there, we'll go right to uh, painting the froth, the, the wave, get the wave in, I think. The, and then uh, we'll get on to the other stuff. There are pieces of pillars, broken off pillars down in here too. So those would be fun to do. They're just like simple black, dark shapes. So if we get, I put them in at the end, make sure I got all this fun, fun stuff squishing around here. I'm going to use my knife to move some paint around. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So 
let me see. I probably used up all my paint I was going to use for everything, but uh, we'll see. Uh, this is oxide red and phthalo green, mostly on the oxide red side, a little bit of ochre in it. Yep, a little bit of ochre, maybe just a little bit more ochre now. Get on my ochre again. I think I'd use that much. Bring it all the way down. Same here, I'm just gonna keep going and just do all these, the tops of these guys. I figure uh, just dragging it and just kind of leaving bare white areas and stuff. I'll be, I'll be able to come back and get that with one stroke and get the stuff. And then also I'll be gonna use the shadows to help shape them and stuff to thin them out and stuff. I'll be able to use the shadows on this thing and stuff. So that should be cool. Definitely want the red to show through right in here because else it's going to blend into this green and stuff here a little too much. Talking to myself, sorry. Everything goes. All right. Pillars are going in nicely. Uh, I really probably could do a couple darker colors in here. I would go with no white, uh, colors with no white now. I'm coming in here and, and making sure you get these uh, little pieces of wood here that are showing through a little bit or I think it's, you know, I, I'm putting this dark in because I want to give the, like I put this, you know, lighter green in after on top of it or next to it. And I really want to uh, make that green jump out a little bit, stand out easy and stuff. So I'm going a little dark on painting uh, this post. get the, the character of the post, that's great too. See, it's just a nice, easy paint. Just no, no worries, nothing hard yet. No one screaming at you. Saying, How come it's not done yet? I think one of the hardest things to do is uh, do less, you know, knowing where, where to not put a lot of time in, try to do, do it very simply. Uh, and so knowing that that's what's going to happen, that's what is going to look best instead of putting in too much work, too much strokes uh, too early. And staying with your focus a little bit. Um, now I'm gonna. Now you can start digging into the, these these little areas here, putting a little more dark uh, oxide red and phthalo and blue, phthalo green. That's what this is right now. Going in into this water area right here, this main pitch. I should be on the green side back in here. Oh, more green.
say. Just preparing a few spots here. Running out some color on my brush, preparing some spots. I need some cut. So this color in them. This color is again phthalo green and just oxide red right now. I'm using just trying to get the, the couple of these shapes right in here, just catching where the dark is and the shape and where the light is. And that's that's what sets these things off is catching the back edge, what's up raised up. That's what's going to be. That's what's going to uh, have the most light. So that's going to be warmer. That's what's going to catch uh, some some red or ochre. The front part is going to be cooler. So maybe it could just a little bit more green than than red. Okay, and then this guy here, much more ochre. I gotta get my ochre out. Okay. So put some more. Uh, Phalo green and ochre and just a touch of red together. Just a lot more ochre though. No white yet. No white. Fresh hair in there. Okay. Now I got some little richness to it. Get this. Start thinking about this. This area here, the top of the wave. Getting into this poker. Yeah, it's a little too much green in my brush. Okay, pure ochre and just a little bit of oxide red. That's all I'm going to be using now for this very bottom part in here. Got a little dark, but I want to get this back in here in spots. So it kind of glows a little bit. Maybe I just touch a white to it, lighten it. There we go. All right. So. That's uh, the big stuff. Get this, get this meshy stuff in. Let's get, get the strength of uh, this crashing wave in. A lot of times to get that, I need to get make sure the dark is in the right spots underneath first. And so I'm just kind of blending it out a little bit underneath, knowing that I don't want too much uh, brightness on the edge of my painting again. So that's what I can bring down some of this green I have in here, bring it down a little farther, you know, so. A little darker here. I'll try to keep the, the hot, the big spot right, right in here. 
this is the money spot for that wave. And then this will be subordinate. And then I'll have this over here, just bring you back in, into the pan. Um, yeah, I was finding too, ochre, just pure ochre, touch of red, just a touch of cad red too. Really has a nice little spot right here on the top edge uh, of this thing. A few spots, look for it. Runs across and it just kind of creates a cylinder, kind of creates a side here, turns it down. This guy's good. Bring him down a little bit. Bring him down. Just running out my brush here because I'm going to go in a different direction. So, going with a lot of white. So, just run this orange and stuff out of my brush. Just make it up. Make it softness going on. So, get that done. All right, the thing to do though, you want to do, there's some nice things already happening in here, transparency wise and stuff. Simple strokes, don't overpaint. Um, use a bristle brush for this wave. You want something that's gonna open up. Hold a lot of paint and, and, and uh, push up. That's where I wanna push up. Uh, this first area, I'm going to start right in here. Uh, I'm going to use the, it just has just a little ochre in it, but it's uh, white uh, and uh, oxide red, just a little bit of oxide red. And it's just got a little bit of ochre in it, so it just has a little warm tinge to it. Now I'm just going to set up, you know, going down my brush we're usually used to going down with it I'm going to push just push it up start from more the bottom and push my brush up and let it let it come out if I had enough paint on it you know it would you'd see the, the what would happens here so you want to go around it and don't use the same direction of your strokes each time you, you, you put a stroke down, the next one next to it has to kilter. You have to turn your brush so it doesn't line up. So you don't have a picket fence or you want a falling down fence. That's what I want. So that's pretty good. Um, the next I'll put in my, that's pretty much where the winner is supposed to go. So the next one's gonna go right next to it. It's gonna be uh, just this color here is, uh, Ochre and white. This is just mostly white. Ochre, it's our kind of like our, my hero color and stuff. I wanted to put it, I kind of thought I was going to put it there, but I can put it right here. It's just, it's not that far over yet. It's just get that, that shape in there anyway. I can do it by twisting my brush. And I want to leave gobs of paint behind because I can take those gobs of paint and move them around very easily and they'll just do all the work. Okay. Now if I come back and put just a little bit of this ochre in the middle of this guy, you know, he'll jump out that ochre starts to jump out of that. Good. Um, I'll still have to do some cools so much. The rest of these guys are going to have just a little bit, not be so, uh, more, mostly just a little bit more ochre, a little bit less color over here, maybe a little bit more green. Yeah. Maybe even, let me try some cool colors over here. Uh, cool. These are oxa these are phthalo green and blue and white, just mixed up a little bit. Take it easy on this stuff. This stuff, when you put this stuff in, you know, drag your brush, little teeny spots, 
done. Because you overdo it, you get, the magic's going to be gone really quick. It's just going to look kind of blobby. But if you put it on really light and then only on like uh, certain spots, you don't put it everywhere. Uh, this gr the greens and stuff and white, the coolness, this looks gorgeous. I mean, you could just put it up here and just, boom. Well, that's good. I like that. I just don't want to get into it too soon. Uh, again, now I'm going to go from there. I want to go to my uh, my pinks, my white pinks, right in here. It kind of comes in, it comes down. There's a couple, two pieces next to it. I made one out of it. Just twist my brush down. It just blends out a little bit. That's the nice thing about these bristles. They kind of blend a little bit more than a, you know, they don't have that cutting edge and sharp edge that a uh, synthetics do. So these guys can sometimes lay down paint just right, just a soft edge to it. Stuff it's like, you know, I like putting it on, using it for hair and stuff like that. Let's see, I got this other white here. Okay, I'm gonna go with a couple cooler colors now. Cool whites, cool blues, blues and whites. Back in the farther back here. So let's go that way. Brings just a little coolness up above on the back edge of this guy right in here. A aqua right in here. And look for that color now. As we could start going back and stuff, you're gonna start finding the highlights and stuff are gonna be this blue and phalo green and just a touch of white. Find little just little dab, dabs of it. And you can use it to that'll just do all the work. Leave a little space in between. If you go little by little, you know, just hit these little spots. You see the shadow and stuff underneath here. You just this is just phalo green and blue and white. It gets most of it. And then I was going to come back with just blue and white in the big part of the for the big part of the shadow. And that be the highlights in the.
I kind of just kind of when I started adding that little blue in it, it just kind of took me in, in back in here and back around there. I just kind of go with uh, what's going on. You no, know, I've come back and let's finish up this uh, these guys here. Sorry. Uh, definitely just ochre and white, just a touch of phthalo in it. It's a really warm, rich color here just to bring down. When I get down here, I want it pink. I want to use pink. When I get down to the water level here. That's where I see colors and stuff in these froths and make them interesting. That's why I made, made up those uh, little uh, pinks and yellows and, you know, blues because this is right here is right where they, they start to make the magic. Especially when you've got this kind of blue gray, this is gonna be blue gray. Not quite that light though, I don't think it has to be. Put a little oil on my brush. Still using my bristle brush. I'm gonna lay it down flat in this big area here. Just see if I can, you know, roll it into this shape just to get the outside shape and then come back and put a little pink on it and get the outside inside shape coming down. And I'll do the same over here. I think it's, it's a little bit blue on the back edge. Blue recedes, so that's why it's blue on the back edge. Makes it easy to an easy read. And then pink in the front edge. So it doesn't have to be bright pink, but I'm just using uh, oxide red and blue and just on the re oxide red side. And that's what's creating the this light here going across too. Think of it as a shape of the line pointing in. I'll be able to use that same stuff, the same paint and stuff. Oh, I've got a little bit of going over here already. Putting it in here and uh, help hit hit a few spots here. I think it's good. Doesn't feel too bad there. Could be warmer. This guy has just a little life to him too. I didn't didn't see the side right here. And he just yeah, just get these only a little bit of overlap. Too, so I want these two to have a little bit of overlap because uh, use it. Okay, barnacle time. I guess we can put barnacles on. Finish up the posts, put a little knife work in, you know, get a little, little margarita, and uh, we're done, you know. So he's, we're, break it out.
I am just using a little bit of this green and stuff here too. This is cool. It's easy to overdo it, easy to overdo it. I got too big a brush, so that's the thing too, is I wanna have a big brush so I can't, you know, start noodling into everything. You know, start getting into these little areas and going, because ah. it's always the big brush that looks, does the nice stuff. You just don't realize it until you think, you know, a little brush you think you have more control with. But uh, just kind of zaps the power. So I'm just going through here and I'm going to just run a, I'm going to put the blue side. We go with the blue. Got a lot. I've been using the, face, the green side a lot. So every once in a while you just switch over and go to the blues or blue than uh, phthalo green and white mix. Get that will do it. That's, Got me a long way. I still got a lot of little areas here to use this stuff and to be able to define areas um, by using some of this color. Uh, I'm going to switch back now to a uh, probably number, you know, 10 brush. I want a kind of a synthetic. And uh, I'm going to put in the these last posts here and think about highlights and stuff. Um, I'm going to go with uh, basically oxide red, white, and I'm going to put in just a little bit of ochre into it. I think I got too much white in this one, so I'm just going to bring up my ochre and add a little bit into it. So it's not too perfect. You have to put a little blue into it to gray it out. And I'm gonna push, push it right there on the line and drag it down and twist it off a little bit here again and just give it a little twist, push hard. Grab some more paint. This time I'm just gonna let my brush be dirty. Grab it here and just come down the sides. Probably gonna have to brighten this up. I could brighten this up, I guess. Yeah, I got a little little pinky. Probably could go a little oaky, a little more ochre in it. We'll do that on this one. See if this one makes a difference. And push it up a little bit if I don't get. Too bad. Over here, push it. Just twist your brush off in that one line. This one, no one cares about. No one. The coolest one will probably is the one you know you don't you don't care about. Which is where usual always goes. Like I didn't spend any time on that one. Two seconds, and you know, that's it. I'm just hitting the highlights again here on these guys. These guys got went a little cool and a few of these highlights here and stuff. So um, I just gotta warm them up with a little ochre white stuff. Get, pull them back a little bit. They're very purple. <laughs> Okay. Now can we see it? Now is that it? It's getting go closer. Go back into these pillars and just get the one sides a little bit warmth, more warmth. That's good. Just a little ochreish red, green maybe. You know, I figure we're gonna put in this a little bit of this pylon stuff here too. Let me. I'm gonna go with on that. 
and poker. I want to go with that, make putting up the bottoms of wet areas. Back here, a lot of ochre, a, little, a lot of red, a little, a little bit of red into it. Ochre and red makes an orange. And maybe just a little bit of phalo into that. Just for an orange first. Then I bring just a little bit of phalo into it. Well, we'll see. Something ochre. More ochre. Catch a white. Lighten it. That's in there. That color is in there. So that color is ochre, oxide red, uh, and uh, just a touch of phthalo green, just a touch. And uh, let's see where else, uh, white. Now I can see the warmth from that. Now what Beautiful warmth and start getting it back in these guys too. So a little bit of everything going. Uh, how we go with the green price, put it some more phthalo green and ochre together. Yeah, and just a little bit of red, just scratch red. Oops. It's come to just, life. Just like that, doesn't it? It's amazing. Did not even put a bird in there yet. <laughs> How you doing? You okay? Well, mine is just too wet to do anything more to it, but uh, there, you know, maybe there's hope. I don't know that it'll ever look like yours. <laughs> oh, it's definitely hope. This is one of those ones where you, you, you can make a lot. I think you can make a lot of, uh, not even mistakes, but there's a lot of, things you can do uh, and get away with and stuff, especially when you're doing wood like this. It, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just has to be flat and kind of round at the bottom to feel like it's in water. And that's it on those guys. Uh, try to shove in some blues and some greens in it as soon as you can. Make sure you got the worms underneath. That's here. Uh, and then in the shadows, again, go with the, the cools, the blues and the purples in here. Oh, boy, that's beautiful. Always look for those little thing, touches of color. And now, you know, you want me to take a look? Or are you about right? You're not hanging. You're not taking off, are you, uh, Lynette? I probably will leave a little early, but uh, yeah, sure. You know, I mean, skipping, I'm uh, skipping class. In, She's getting out early. It needs a lot of early. Help. I'm old. That's my excuse. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> the ball. Yeah. yeah, okay, okay. I have two. No. All right. Let me see I, what you I got. I love your colors in the water. Wow. That's see, that's where I was going. That's what I saw. That you're gonna get 
all these colors in here, but I still don't even have purples in here yet. And the purples are gonna kind of kind of be the color that kind of holds these guys together. But it's a lot of it is just your brush expression. That's what I kind of I kind of liked because I could see it. it's all brush brush work, you know. And if you don't put your brush strokes right next to each other all the time, you know, let them kind of just breathe simply by themselves. You know, you, it starts to work. Um, mm. It's pretty quick. Uh, let me see what you got, Lynette, just in case you, I don't okay. want you running off. I feel bad when you run off and I didn't get a chance oh, to make yeah, heckle yeah. you. I, yeah, right, right, right. I don't want to. I think I, I, my posts Ooh. are uh, down too Ooh. low. The oh, posts you know, should be up higher. No. You don't have to do any. Yeah, you know, if you want to add, when you put on the next color, you lengthen them out if you want. I don't see that as a, what you got as a problem at all. I think they're fine. It's kind of like you don't have to be exact on that. Right. Really right. good. Good start. I mean, really, your colors are really good. You just need more reds in there. Or more reds in your greens at the bottom of the post. Um, okay. You're, 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 your strokes on the water are really, really good and stuff. Uh, you got a lot of really good information there. Now I'd say it's just really uh, identifying uh, the light colors in there by, by, by enhancing them, by putting a, just a hair of that aqua blue, white, you know, in, the, in, in next to them a little bit, just a few spots. And um, I'll show it to you. Uh, it's just putting them right next to the big, the big splash. You put a little bit of blue, little, little, you know, tiny brush spot of blue in there, and it just changes you, know, you. The color comes out. You know what color the, you the put top, in there. The top right of now, the waves. Top well, of right the waves. next to the splash, the the crashing, the foam, the the white oh, areas okay. you have right now. I'm just saying that if you put just a touch of blue in, in 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 there, just just in, uh, in a few spots, uh, the colors will come out. Okay. You know, the colors you put in, the, the red, the pinks, the yellows, and, and um, will come out of there uh, and you'll see them really, you know, and they'll be really fun. You okay. Know, everything's coming along really good. I think uh, a little more warmth on the, on your uh, planks uh, in the, in the very bottom on the front front yeah you know black dark area just make those a little warmer more red your sky your water back there is coming along really well i think yeah you got the big you got the big ones in you got the big strokes in now just kind of mess it up with the little teeny ones coming in and stuff just take your time oh. mark it out and uh things and then really you know it's just your posts figure out your posts you're gonna post uh uh, and they also you got the you also got the dark side the shadow side of the post to thin them out I would not go any thicker you know make sure okay. the shadow when you put the shadow in it goes inside that in inside that mark you made okay Except we don't want to let's keep them thin and that's gonna be gorgeous when those get the darkness comes down it's gonna set them down in the water you could okay. do that today you could get that in today <laughs> oh if you have the color or you can wait till tomorrow. I don't care. You take a break. <laughs> okay, thank but, you. But uh, it, it's a really good start. Okay, thank you. Well, so it actually okay. turned out to be a lot of fun. We didn't. You didn't even. You know, if you want to, also you might take your clean your thing and uh, put in your uh, where you think the the seagull is going to go. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Keep them small. You don't have to do too much. You make them too big either. You can keep them kind of small. Okay. No. Thank you. Okay. Go off somewhere. Anyway, got this. Got this. Uh, like you said, you know, you know, I just talked saying that here, nice, easy little uh, rectangle. You can size wise, he's about, you know, you take that post, 
he's just slightly bigger than it. So if I just, you know, dig out a, you know, little bit of an eye drop shape sideways, you know, round it off up here, slight head. His legs can be as any length you want, though. That's the beauty. Too much, too much, too much. All of a sudden, he becomes a big bird. <laughs> He's not easy. So that's how I start by cleaning him out first, knowing where he wants to go, mm. and then put in his uh, then put in his wing, and and put in with a blue gray. We have in there, and then a uh, the little uh, whoop. And my brush would have been good. Thought I could do it, thought I could just grab it and, and just be magic. It's not ochre and white. God, it looks ochre and white. Sure looks like uh, it has a lot of red in it. It's that color. So maybe a let me see, cool blue, white blue. No. Get that belly in. Just get the ring. Then get some warmth on top again. Bring the green back, draw gray back in. All right. I'm gonna get that, get that. All right, um, that's how I'd put them in. Uh, not saying it's perfect yet, but it's in. Uh, what's left to do is uh, put in the uh, exciting part of this thing. It's right in here, it's these darks, docks. Put in the docks. Um, oxide red and green. Will work. Maybe put a little blue in them. Get a couple of dark spots right here in the shadows. So you got a couple little little noogies that are breaking up, and you put them right against that little white uh, wave, little showing through. Blue in them too. I think I put a little blue green in them too. Again, like oxide red, the ochre together, a little dark. Uh, Red patches in the wood showing through here. Okay. And I'll put in the shadows on these guys. A little bit of shadow in here. Trying to get that get them to work. Uh, trying to use uh, blue and phthalo green here. Really dark uh, thing. It looks like I'm going to have to put some red into them too. 
red showing through here. A little bit of mix of those three colors. I need the red to really be strong to really set this guy in the bottom. So that's why I've got an oxide red, phthalo green, phthalo and blue. Basically taking the first few colors I made and just put, kind of put them together a little bit. A little bit more blue. I think I'm going to go a little more blue on the back ones. Getting a little red, more red in show. I need more red showing through here. This guy. And I'm going to be, uh, when I do this too, watch how many times I, you know, like run a straight line. I want to make sure I, you know, take it from the sides and go. That just makes for a much more interesting uh, line to break up. Okay. More red. Maybe pretty sure red would probably be on the front edge of that line of the shadow of this guy. Probably look for it right at the bottom in the water too. So oxide red, a little heavier when you put that in, a little heavier right at the water level. So I'm going back and so what do you guys want to paint next week? What are interesting things you guys want to paint? Got some more fall colors we can do. Uh, Said we could do people, could do a person or something. Interested in that, you know, going through some uh, color uh, combinations for uh, people. Paint a horse. No horse. Huh? What? No. No, no, no horse. horse. No more horsey. <laughs> You're done. Done with horses. No, I'm How, not. I'm not speaking for the class, just for me. How about, how about people, Lisa? Yeah, I'd like to try it. Yeah, me too. You try an old, we could try, I could see what I have. Some some kind of, you know, kind of fun character type portrait, maybe thing that uh, you could have fun with, like people, you know. Mm -hmm. Not not a caricature, but you know something that uh, you know you could you could you can have some fun with. Doesn't have to be, uh, and we're not you know we're gonna have to be like super realistic or anything. That sometimes oh, you don't get worry away about. With. Don't worry about that. Okay, all right. Yeah, I just in the drawing part. That's the thing. It's always the drawing part. That's you true. Know, a uh, long time. You can, I, you can like, you can do it. You can graph it out ahead of time. That's what I'm saying. I'm gonna have if you to. want, yeah. yeah. If everybody wants to graph it out or draw it out, I won't, but you guys can, uh, you know, and see how it goes and stuff. If you guys need to, I, you know, whatever it takes to get you there. That's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't, I don't worry, worry about it. I, I come from a, uh, you know, a commercial background and you know it doesn't make a difference i don't care if somebody used a lucy or anything else on on how they what they did you know it's it's, it's what they did after it you know 
you know, you speed a sped you up, but you know, you still got to be able to draw or do some stuff. So only helps so much. All right, now I'm putting almost, I was putting in almost pure uh, darks in there now, uh, trying to get this thing back together, especially at the oxide red and blue now, almost straight, straight, trying to get this one edge here, maybe touch of oil just to make sure when I put it down, it goes clean. See, when you put oil in, in your in and grab it and stuff this is what happens when you put you can touch it you get a clean stroke if you don't put it in it mixes your brush mixes and after a while it just mixes together and you get that color this color here but when you put just a touch of oil on your brush before you grab the color you can get back to really good color all right um, little things going on here. So yeah, people look out, look for something. I think I have, I have a little girl thing. It would be kind of, kind of fun. They're always kind of, you know, people look for that stuff. Gravitate towards it. So you could find something, do something there. I don't know. It depends on whatever Lisa wants. You know. Oh no. We'll wait for Lisa. We'll wait for Lisa. Nope. And that's the one that's been doing all the fancy traveling. <laughs> She's probably got. Oh, 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 nice pictures. She has real pictures. Yeah, Dave took some good stuff. Well, Dave has the uh, newer iPhone, and so it's like a 15 power and three lenses, and yeah, yeah, mine is just five power, two lenses. So his is so much better. Good. Well, you know, glad to see see he's feeling better, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's doing great. Good. Right. I like the bird. <laughs> Cute. I just hacked him. I hacked him in there. He's, he needs he needs a little love yet, but yeah. Yeah. Just stuck him in there. One tried to try. I was trying to do it, but now I'm trying to work my way around it right now. I'm not just gonna, you know, see how many birds I want to put on, right? How many birds are we gonna put in this thing? Uh, we're gonna have a challenge. Who can do the most? Give flip off the most <laughs> birds. All right. Um. I'm oh, that was pretty good. Uh, like I said, I was talking to Lynette about putting in. Just a little phalo, cool phalo green and white and, you know, and blue mix here. And just finding little teeny spots you can put this in, you know, dash and, and dot, you know, nothing, you know, nothing too, too heavy. Just little teeny spots. You know, brings out the color of everything around it sometimes. Look for the like um, those guys in the shadow areas here, especially when you have ochres and stuff like that right in here. You got some beautiful little ochres if you put them in. Uh, and then putting these little phalos, greens, and blue mix in there. It's really a beautiful little combination of colors. Finding my little dashes, and then my tiny, tiny dots. 
That should do it. For... Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna have to clean up back in here. They get a little clean up, a little softening, you know, going through here. And yeah, the bird, okay. Uh, give him one more second here. And I'm just gonna put, take my knife, ochre and white for a beak. If you do need a CAD, go ahead and use CAD yellow if you need to. No big deal. Just basically scratch it in. Oh, my. And if I want, you can repeat that a few times. Uh, do these, uh, do another one if you want. You know, do as much of what you want. Eyeballs are just a dot. I'm just, if I put it in, it's good. He needs glasses. That is, that, that, look at that thing. He got sunglasses on. Uh, all right, let me fix that and then we'll, uh, we will get, see what you guys get. See you guys, how far you guys got. See if you guys need some help. I don't know if you guys need help. You guys are so good. Much better. Really put the paint on. More interesting. Yes, much more interesting. No pink. Oh, it's like, oh not that pink. Pink line right here. And white blue at the back. Just a little bit. I'm going to put some darkness. That's the thing is some use your some of these darknesses and stuff like that. Just use your waves to your advantage because right now he's not popping. He's kind of blue and stuff. So if I put just a little warmth, dark warmth behind him, a wave and stuff, all of a sudden he pops out. You can use that. Use those things to to your advantage, run them into these things, that's it. Just break these things up so they don't feel too staggered. And then, uh, like I said, I'll try and put that beak back in. Too long a stroke. Okay. Good enough. See, you know, I want to put another one. I'm probably going to put in maybe the back of one here, just right in here, maybe and then balance it off with one guy over down in here. Looking back in, flipping it back in. I think I'll do that. I'll show it to you guys. You guys will see it in the show. Um, I'll bring you guys in for a close-up. And you can start to see the, the bird a little bit. You can start seeing what, what I was talking about uh, in, the, in the wave down there, the colors and stuff. And then using the, the blue-green, uh, just little teeny spe specks and stuff, some kind of separate. Uh, some of the big areas of the wave that's this coming down white froth um, and then also look for it in the uh, in the shadow areas in here and stuff so the highlights in the water in the shadow areas um, and then just have fun back there it's kind of like a little swoosh of things back there 
you know, if you don't, you know, just that, just the combination of that green and that warm green against the cool aqua color, it's pretty cool. I mean, that's, I like that. We always, you know, mix, mix for an interesting paintings and stuff. And we only use four colors. So we save money. We save a lot of money on this painting. <laughs> Because <laughs> we didn't, we didn't go so. Okay, so we, Lynette, did you paint any more? You want to show again? No, or are you good? no, I didn't. I didn't paint any more because it's too wet. But uh, now, oh. now I think I know maybe what to do. All right, my mic might be going out. It's blinking red. So let's get going oh. here. Let's go to Lisa. If I go out, I'll just have to unplug. I'm gonna, um, Jim. I'm gonna dial back in on my phone because my iPad. Um, okay. Cameras. All right, we'll go so with you. Right Kathleen. All right, Kathleen's up. Kath, okay. Kathleen, um, how are you doing? Well, I need a lot of help on this one. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good, though, because every time you say that, you turn around and do something very spectacular. Your last one, you really came a long ways. Well, you kept working it. And <laughs> good. Good. That's how you grow. That's great. That's, it was really something to see see you put all, all the yellow in there and put it in there so strong and uh, in it in the right places. It looked really great. It was a good spot. Good. Well, well thank you. Good I really studied yours a lot and then tried to bring it back. So I almost started another yeah. one and then I thought, no, I'm just gonna try it a little longer. And that's it. Paid you off. Can, you can, Got to live with the paint because I tell you, when you do start them over, those kind of paintings, they really don't get that much better. <laughs> really? You always get to, you always get them to the same spot. Well, I uh, hope you can see with the iPad here, but um, oh boy, it's that beautiful. Well, thank you. I don't know the wow. water pretty pretty bad, but um, I can't yeah. seem to get the whites you have, but. And I know well, the back needs a lot of work too, and the boards. <laughs> no, you got the white. You got the whites. You got the whites. They're not supposed to be super bright, bright and stuff. Okay. Don't don't worry about that. Uh, just look for color. Look for cool cools on the bottom of the flat. Um, you know when it flattens out. You know keep the warms in the in the in the froth or the splash, and then cools again and again. Find the cools on top. Uh, that'd be great. Okay. Good I'll job on the that. darks. <laughs> yeah. The darks are coming along really well. Good, good. Very interesting. Uh, Thank yeah. You. Good. You know, you got your, got your, uh, seagull in already. <laughs> sort of. Uh, scratch. Yeah, him I know. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's where he goes. You know, it's, it's the scratch, you know, that's, it's the easiest way to put him in there. And, um, you know, you got them sitting down. That's fine. That's cool. That's fun. Um, if you want to, you know, put more in. That's cool. That's great. You do what you, you do. What that, you want that on that. Their painting was really hard. I mean, they're a lot harder than I thought they were. Uh, anyway, <laughs> maybe they, they get easier. Get, yeah, yeah. But uh, well. I like what you're going for in the back. Too. I like the really nice. You have really, really nice brushwork. Um, just Thank keep you. it up. I think you're you're yeah. definitely going in, in some nice nice direction. Don't worry about you know brightening up the splash too much. Anyway, I think it get 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 everything else in. Uh, okay. And I think you you'll be happy with it. Yeah, I think the problem is around the splash. I don't have the right darks in yet. Um, That's that could be it. That's one yeah. of the things is, is setting those guys, setting it up for uh, for the for for putting those guys in. You know, well, you'll keep, get it. Yeah, I mean, I really haven't. I know I say this every painting, but mainly I just did people and animals, so a lot of this stuff is really new and it's it's fun. It's a lot harder now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you're amazing. You just make well, it look so easy. Well. You know, I have practice about being amazing. I just can't help yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, thanks, James. No worries. So you see, Lisa and Mar uh, Margaret, you want to turn your cameras on? Well, I got Lisa here. So go to Lisa. Lisa. Oh, Lisa. Wow. Beautiful. 
this is what you do, Lisa. This is these are right up your color alleys, aren't they? Look at that. <laughs> yep, it's wow. too much. It looks like a Pink Floyd album cover. I need to change it. <laughs> uh, really pretty. No, you don't. I love Pink Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it's very cool. I like that splat. I like your wave coming in there. It has movement, nice, nice Yay. tip to it. And and I always like the cool colors in the bottom already. You you gosh, Lisa, you're go you've gotten fast. Happy in you, Jim. Yeah, that's why I'm always fishing for you know for compliments. Uh, right. no, but I'm always amazed how fast you can be you can be. You know, when you flap it in there and stuff like that. That's really beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank Just you. don't mess it up with the seagull. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, maybe a horse. I'm going to put a horse on that pulse. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It'll work. I'd also like to tiny... watch a couple of Annette, Lynette rejected my offer of five dollars to put a horse in my farm painting. <laughs> Did she? Oh, that's that is mean. But that's you why didn't. I turned it up. Pony. <laughs> <laughs> One trick pony. That that's really super. Congratulations uh, so far, uh, Lisa. Let's finish that one up. That's going to be really nice. Um, I like I like everything about. It. I can't. I like uh, this because it's got depth in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really good job. Mm -hmm. I like it the really, way, you know, you, you this is perfect for you. Um, Thank you. Okay. Good but, job. Thanks. Let's see. We got Margaret. Let's see. Hers are on. And turn your stuff on. Oh, I added spotlight. Sorry. I, 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 did, I didn't, I, I didn't do it. Um, I watched uh, James because uh, I no, it's that's lit. no good. There. There's just no good there, <laughs> Margaret. You I'll be doing it tomorrow. Well, if, if as long as the recording's available, it's uh, I find it hard to follow because it's so late <laughs> for me. So uh, it goes better when I, I I do the recording. I understand. I understand. It's almost <laughs> midnight there. I'll let you go. Oh, that's <laughs> I'm just happy that that it's not like that it's doable anyway, you know. Oh yeah. Where are yeah, you? you can... I'm in New Brunswick, Canada. Oh. Oh. oh wow. that's awesome. You know, I so, thought you, I thought it was Ireland, but no, I guess it's just New. <laughs> I'm Irish, though. So. Or. <laughs> that's probably why, eh? Yeah. <laughs> but that's uh, I really I. I <laughs> I love this subject. I, I'm anxious to get to it. Hopefully it'll turn out okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, you've done a great job on the barn and the other one. So uh, you should you'll be you'll have no problem. Just well, thank you know you. no problem. Yeah, I really like what you did. Okay, uh, I'll leave you alone. Uh, let's go to Ann. Let's see what she does. She won't turn on her mic. I don't that's almost Let's see. Anne doesn't turn on her mic. That's okay, Anne. We don't care to talk to you. We're just going to, you know, no, 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 no. Too late, Anne. Look at her. She paints big. This girl goes big. She goes bigger. Go home. Oh, she can't even hold it up without smearing it. I'm unmuted. There you go. You're unmuted now. Wow, Ann. Oh, wow. Man. Smart <laughs> move to paint it big. Good job. Love that is gorgeous. Well, I wanted to paint a big bird. I found a pelican with a fish in its mouth. <laughs> yeah. How about all those dogs? You could put all those dogs swimming out there too. Do you want. Remember that painting? The, listen, I've got the one with all the dogs. I did your boat and I put a golden retriever inside it and a black lab in the the raft. <laughs> <laughs> Did you sell it already? I sold it right off the bat. I still haven't figured out writing a name on the boat. <laughs> oh, oy, oy, oy. Those, that looks gorgeous. Really good colors. Mm -hmm. uh, boy, it's holding together very strong. I like, wow, that water back there. Man, how, 
how tough was it to put in that water in the, the background? Water, nice the water, water was interesting, but what I really need to do is a lot of work on the wave, you know, like some, maybe just some real white, you know, with knife. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, yeah, put it in any way you have to get it in there. That's cool. You got some really nice colors in there. God, it's gorgeous. Well, your colors, James. You are the champion colorist of the world. I just paint. I just. I just made it up uh, out of those colors. That's pretty great, though. I like it. I like it on everybody. So good. I think Thalo Green owes you a percent of their stock. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. It, it's kind of interesting. I kind of changed me. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> what about it's Thalo Blue? Great. I've never seen you work with Thalo Blue. I haven't put, you know, I, the blue I have is it does have a mix of Thalo Blue in it, I found out. So it's like, okay. I never thought it did, but it does to make well, that fake color, cobalt. Killer colors. That Thalo Green is like, wow. I know if you use it right, if you don't let it control you, you control it, it can behave. You know, that's the whole thing, smacking it down. That's coming along fabulous. I really love it. Thank you. Congrats. We'll that's see. Be, that, that, After another 40 hours on it, we'll see what I have. Oh, <laughs> you got to be done. I'll give you two hours. Oh, I'll, I'll spend three days on this. <laughs> I know. We all, we all do. Sandra, did you paint? Sandra, so you got to turn your mic on and your 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 video on. Sandra, Sandra might be sleeping. <laughs> Don't hear anything. Sandra, wake up. Okay. Anyway. Uh, Next week, yeah, I'll look for some people for next week or something fun like that. You know, uh, I got I got all kinds of guys. I got some really cool tractor guys. I mean, guys who were I went to this tractor show, old antique tractor show, and so you had a bunch of farmers doing a parade with the, all these old uh, antique tractors and stuff. So I got some pretty good characters there. So maybe I'll pull one of those guys. It's, they are kind of they're. They're farmers, you know, they look like farmers, you know. So if you ever need a farmer, I have them. <laughs> <laughs> Real guys. They got cool tractors. Um, so that'll be fun for next week. Uh, anything else going on? No. Okay. Uh, just finish this guy, this one up, put it up on the site. Let's see what you got. And uh, we'll see you all next week. All right. Good night, everybody. All right. Night, everybody. Night, everybody. Night, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.